going on, guys? Mm. Had a rough morning. Not a rough morning, but probably it's like a frustrating morning, but it's all good. It's not going to knock me. It's not knock, I'm not going to let it get to me. It's still cool. Everything's good. I'm breathing. I'm not going to let little situations um get to me. Then that, it's kind of my fault. I was being careless last night. My phone, my phone screen cut off. It went and, uh, it went and it stopped cutting off. So I ended up going to the store to buy a new phone. And um, I bought a new phone, a prepaid phone. Then I opened it up, bust it open, um, tried to get it activated. Then, it, then I figured out that I, I, I had no internet. So I walked back to the electronic um, spot or the section. To see if they can help me with it. And um, <clears throat> basic long story short, as I left and went back, came back to the cart. Someone took my Sims card, code out my um, out my uh, cart. So I tried to still end up activating the whole phone without it, and uh, couldn't activate it. So I'm like, she's so waste my own, I'm wasting my own um, uh, own money. So I went back to the uh, I tried. I went back to the electronic spot again without my cart. And after I was done with them, I went back to look for my cart. I couldn't find my cart. <laughs> so I'm like, dang, somebody pickpocketing me back and forth. So I think that the enemy trying to frustrate me. It's all good, though. So I basically, um, I came back to Walmart this morning to see if I can get a refund. They said I need a receipt and all that. But the guy that was next to him, when they were saying this, it's the same person who let me refund something without the receipt. But I still, I just walked out. I'm gonna just call them. I'm gonna call them on phone. I just don't wanna. I didn't have. I don't got time to be bickering in the morning. It's too early. And you know how Walmart people are. They just, you know, they got the most. They got a lot of attitude. They be angry at the world. So like, I know how it is in retail. But, uh, you know, he was dotting the eyes at me. But I felt all that negative energy. So I'm good though. I cast that right off of me. God made me too, too much of a happy person. And, like, I'm good. You know, I'm gonna just keep it moving. But uh, other than that, guys, it's it's good to um, talk to you guys. And um, of course, I uh, um, woke up this morning. I opened a book randomly, like I usually do. And um, it took me to Deuteronomy 28, and this one spoke to me heavy. And uh, so this in Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 28. And I'm gonna start from um, verse uh, 59. This is about Israel being will be enslaved. So. I'll start, it says, and this is chapter 20, it says, then, uh, it says, if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of the sea, even great plagues of the long continuance, and sore sickness and, the, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and, and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed, and ye shall be left few in number. Where, where is ye were as stars of heaven up for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of thy, the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you, to do good and to multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one uh, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. There and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou found no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot, and have rest. But the Lord shall give thee that a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and a sore of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt, thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and, it, and, and, and even would shall say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. That just sound wretched, don't it? It's scary, right? 
In chapter 29, it says, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land, the great temptations which thy eyes have seen, the signs of those great miracles. Yet the Lord hath not given you in heart to perceive, perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. And right now, we're in the times of that right now. People don't have the eyes to see, despite what's going on, despite the, the, the destruction and the chaos going on, despite the uh, sickness that's going on, like COVID. You got that, and all these diseases popping up, and all this, these murderous events happening, you know, massacres, you know, catastrophes, earthquakes. It seems like we're in that time now, right? And uh, people will, will not have the eyes to see, nor the ears to hear. So people will have the spirit of delusion taking over them and that's like being damned by that's like being damned like you're cursed not to even know what's going on and it's not a lot of people who do know what's going on and it's like they're singled out and amongst of a mass of people who are just like in zombie mode and it's it's sad and i, I thank god so much that he he, he 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 delivered me he saved me he gave me eyes to see pulled me from my own lust a uh, lusty lifestyle and he saved me for myself i was living foul man it's only by his mercy and grace and his love and i'm forever grateful and um, i'd rather be i'd rather be like i'd rather be the one to see what's going on than to you know be influenced by the world because i i refuse to conform to the world and um even though i i'm an enemy to the world because i'm with god just like anyone else is i'd rather be that than to be of this world because after you leave this earth you're going to hell and i refuse i refuse and god been too good to me to, for me to, to be rebelling and to live a, a sinful life at the end of the day and um as long as you are god you're an enemy to the devil he'll do all in his power to try to you know destroy you lure you away from everything that uh he has for you and everything he, he tried to pull you away from everything that god has for you because god wants nothing but the best best for us so as long as you're doing your part god will fight for you he'll protect you he'll give you endurance he'll give you, he'll give you everything that you need to get through through these trying times because the reward is way it's the way it won't the time the hard times you go through won't even compare to the glorious days that he'll, he'll bring you in and that's a promise everything in this bible is a promise and that's what i had to learn because i didn't i didn't know the bible at all i had to I had to experience god on my own had experienced his love, his mercy, and his power, and what he can do for for me, and what he can do for me, he can do for you too as well. So that's that's just from me to you. Um, you've seen many other people go through traumatic and crazy situations that looked impossible, and you see those same people. They're different beings now versus how when they was going through that situation, they weren't they weren't like they they weren't like the way they are now because when they look back, they they realized they didn't get themselves out of those situations. It was a creator. So you, you must pray for atheists, people who don't even believe in God, because they, they just got a spirit of delusion and deaf and dumb over them. And, they, and these some of these people are got degrees. And they, they, they go to college, they got degrees, PhDs, but they don't believe in God. They, they defy his laws. They go against him. And um, there's, there's going to be nothing but perishing for these people. So don't let people who, who, who don't have faith in God and things like that, don't let them tear you away from your faith and, and your beliefs in God. Because you don't want to be like, you don't want to be, you don't want to be part of the Israel that's enslaved with plagues and sicknesses and, and temptations with no way out. Seriously. And it says, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And ye came unto this place, Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and O.G., the king of Bashan, came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land unto the Reubenites and the Gedonites and the half tribe of Manasseh, and kept there, kept there for the words of this covenant, and to do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. So God wants us to prosper in everything that we do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy strangers, that is, in thy camp, from the hue of thy wood unto the draw of thy water. 
that thou shouldest enter into into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath in which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, that he may be unto thee, thee a God, as he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto thy fathers Abraham, Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. So God has a promise for all of us that, you know, that stick with him, that fight for him. So God is God is love, you know. He's king. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And that's what I got to say. Um, hope y'all, hope y'all enjoyed that. Probably go to work, and of course they called me and come in on my off day. I'm not staying long. I'm gonna probably stay for a few hours because I, I want to do my own thing. I want to focus on some other things right now. I got things to take care of. And at the end of the day, when you focus on something that's meaningful to God, the enemy will try to distract you. He'll try to put throw a whole bunch of things in your face to try to, you know, hold you up. But we we stay in focus. We're not gonna let the we're not gonna let the enemy distract us. We're not gonna do none of that. We're gonna do what we do. We're gonna ch we're gonna chase these goals. We're gonna do these mi missions, and that's about saving souls. And that's about walking the walk and talking the talk. So that's what that means. We're not we're not letting the enemy. He's gonna use any and everything to distract you, but we're not we're not falling for it. And, I, and when you when we give you the eyes to see and ears here, you will see things that you never thought you that was even all them stuff that you see in movies and like that. Now you will see. It's, it's really like that, you know. That's why you must be careful what you watch. You must be careful what you indulge in, because it can, it can, it can transpire. It can, it'll happen. It'll, it'll start evolving into your life. Really. So that's why I, I don't watch violence no more. I don't watch things that's sexual. So everything that you, you absorb in your soul, it'll, it'll start producing in your life. So if you're into like things that's immoral, immoral and violent. It'll start playing out into your life. So that's why people die and die horrible deaths. Things like that because they're into, like, you know, murderous things. And some people that are into sexual immoral things, that's why they come across people that are sexually immoral when they try to look for, you know, a good girlfriend or a good boyfriend or a, a loyal one. They just run into a bunch of disrespectful, Jezebelic, Jezebelic type women. And it's all about what you you, you let, um, you know. Eyes eyes are the window window to the soul, and you must. That's why you must just blot out. Don't be of this world, cause it's it's, it's poison. I'm telling you, it's poison. So that's all I got. God has a purpose for you. Just just give him just give him give him time to talk to you. Let him uh, show himself to you. So that's all I got to say. God bless. I love you guys. Put him first. Don't put money over God. Don't put women. Don't put cars, clothes, and anything that's vain over him. Because yeah, it won't even, you're just destroying yourself. So God bless. I love you guys. Peace.